So let's roll. Listen to me carefully. If you are a Christian, your Christianity and your belief in God is under attack. The enemy's main objective is to challenge your belief system. It is a challenge whether you believe God. It is a challenge, is there a God? It is the challenge, is this Bible you've been reading that your mama and your grandmama gave you, is that Bible really the word of God? Is it really true that Jesus Christ died for you? How can you prove God if you feel as though you cannot see God? Is this faith walk truly real? I will submit to you that if you are a Christian in this day, in this time, the greatest attack you're going to have is against your belief system. Can you believe God with all of the noise, all of the current trying to rip you away from even believing the validity of this Bible? The culture is designed to make you not believe God and to cause you to struggle. The reason the enemy doesn't want you to believe God is because if you believe God, you get the benefits of what God said. And if he can stop you from believing God, he can keep you from receiving all God has for you. The real attack is not against your health. It's not against your finances. It's not against your children. It's not even them crazy people at your job. The real attack is against do you believe God when life shows you something different? That's, that's the real belief. That's the real battle. That's the real issue. Can you believe God when it doesn't look like what God said is happening in your life? And if you get to a place in your life where that battle is won by the enemy, you miss out on everything God has for you. That's why the real battle, the Bible says you don't fight against people. It says fight the good fight of, let me hear it again, of, which means everything is about, do you believe God? And so that's why the enemy will send you to schools that teach you one thing that is against God, that make you try to believe in evolution, that the world just bang, came into existence by itself, and nobody tells you where the bang came from. The world will tell you that man evolved from apes and an amoeba and evolved, but nobody will tell you how that actually happens, and nobody can see anything that has actually evolved into another species. The world will tell you that these things just came by happenstance, but nobody ever tells you how it happened. And the truth is, it takes more faith to believe the atheist than it does to believe God. And so everything is attacked. The enemy doesn't want you to believe. You want to know why? You want to know why? You want to know why the enemy doesn't want you to believe in God? Can I show you why? Let me, let me prove to you. Let me show you scripture why the enemy will send you to schools, will have you see stuff on the internet, will send people to your life, will bring atheists around you. Let me show you why the enemy does not want you you to believe God. Baby girl, please read Matthew chapter 8. Then Jesus said to the centurion. Check this out. Go. Yeah. As you have believed. Keep going. So will it be done for you. It's done based off my belief. Let me say it again. It's done based off my what? Belief. Let me hear it again. It's done based off my what? Belief. You're not saying it right. Let me. It is done. God's fulfilled his purpose based off my so if I can stop your you won't receive the purpose so everything is an attack against your belief can't believe God for healing why because somebody else died from this can't believe God to take care of my finances why because I've gone through turmoil in the past can't believe God to take care of my children why because they act crazy can't believe struggling with believing God will prevent you from seeing God because as a Christian, we deal with things differently. The world has to see to believe. The child of God has to believe.
to see. Let me say it again. For those of you that need to see, that ain't how faith works. Faith says, believe me like it's already happened. And then you'll see the manifestation. That's why he says we walk by and not by. So let me just tell you this. If you got some stuff in your life that have not manifested yet, I want to see, do you believe God even though you have not seen it? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, let me try it again. Who got some stuff in their life and say, you know what, God? Everybody else is waiting for it. I'm going to trust you like it's already taking place. See, the world wants you to see the victory in order to experience it. The Bible says we don't wait for the battle. We shout now. We don't wait for the end of the fight. We shout at the beginning of the fight like the fight has already been won. Why? Because if I really went there, it's a fixed fight anyway. Because God already worked this stuff out for my good. Y'all ain't hearing the preacher. Let me say it again. It's a fixed fight anyway. The battle is for my belief. Can you believe God when everything looks like it's not possible? I've been, boy, Lord, I done been there. My, my life, my life, my life is filled with faith after faith after faith after faith after faith. My life is filled with having to trust God. I sometimes wonder, God, why you love me so much? I mean, I, I started doing it, I, doing, I started doing a tally. You know, I started, I said, okay, God, I had to believe for a daughter's finger and you grew one back. I had to believe for a child who, who, who had swallowed meconium and all the kids that had swallowed before him died and you kept him alive. I had to believe God for another child who they said needed surgery and his lungs had collapsed and you healed him without surgery. I had to believe for another child and she stopped breathing in the bed next to me and I had to trust God that you were going to bring her back and she would not die in her death bed and you brought her back. God, I had to believe God was going to bring us back from a place where we were kicked out of a church and God was going, and God brought us back. I am telling you, none of that, none of that would have happened if I doubted God. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. Young people, you will save yourself from so much difficulty if you just decide, you know what, I trust him. Despite what I see, I still trust him. Despite what they said, I still, I am making a declaration right now that God is going to meet you at the area of your trust. And let me tell you, let me tell you what makes God excited. God digs situations that look hopeless. He just wants to see one light in the middle of darkness. God just wants to see one truster in the middle of doubters. That's, that's all he wants. He just wants you to be that cat that says, I trust you no matter what it looks like. Anybody like that in the house? Anybody? 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 I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Anybody made a decision, I'm going to be that one. I'm going to trust you when all looks dark, when nothing looks possible, when everybody else gives up on God, I want to be that cat. That's what it wants. My life has been filled with that. That's why I can't, that's why, you know what my big, my wife will tell you, my biggest struggle right now, my biggest, if you want to know what my biggest struggle is, my biggest struggle right now in my life, I'm 49, still in my 40s. I need everybody to bring a big number 50 on his birthday Sunday. Every, I'm going to make them for you. Just pick them up in the lobby. Carry on. But right now, I'm still in my 40s. And, and, and my biggest struggle right now in life, I struggle with being concerned about anything. My wife looks at me and other people say, Dad, something happening. And Bishop, and, then, and I'm like, yeah. It's all right. And people look at me like, you aren't worried? You aren't losing your mind? You upset? No. But don't you know it's an explosion? The world is breaking up. Stars, stars are falling. New York has no lights. All right. Why aren't you worried? 
because I didn't bend down all these roads with God before. My, my biggest issue may be I didn't see God work out too many things for me to be upset about anything. I need y'all to come on this train. I'm trying to invite you somewhere. Let me say it again. I have seen God's hand too many times for me to doubt him now. So I, I start seeing things differently to everybody else. While everybody's worried and tripping and upset, I just say, God, you got this. I trust you. And I start remembering God's resume in my life. You took care of that. You healed that. You delivered that. You blessed that. You fixed that. You, told, you showed up there. And then I start remembering, God, bringing God to remembrance of his word. You know you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I got a resume with God that says I ain't got to worry about tomorrow because look what you done already done in my past. Man, I prophesy that thing on your life right now that you are not going to be a worrier, but you're going to be a reminder. You're going to be a reminder. I remind you of how many times God stepped in. I remind you of how many days God opened up doors. I, in fact, say, I am not a worrier. Say it again, I am not a worrier. I am a reminder. Oh, somebody opened up your mouth. I, I can't. Come on, only got three minutes left. I just can't. Bring me way up in the house. I just can't. I don't know how to worry anymore. I don't know how to be stressed. I see other people stressed, and I'm like, hmm, that look interesting. <laughs> Folks sweating, I, I just, I don't know how. My experience with God has been so vast and so amazing and so incredible and so phenomenal. I don't know how to worry. You say, well, don't things happen? Things happen all the time. Aren't there issues? There are issues all the time. Well, why aren't you concerned? Because God keeps showing up. See, he doesn't want you to have that kind of faith. You want to know why? Look, look what happens, baby girl. Read now Matthew 9, 22. This is what happens when you have that kind of faith. Jesus turned and saw her. Yeah. Take courage. Be excited. Daughter, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. But why would the devil not challenge your belief if he knew it was your belief that was going to bring your blessing? I'm saying this to all the young folks. Listen to me. The enemy is going to challenge you. He is going to challenge your belief. The enemy does not want you to believe because when you believe, you will go through static. You will have some disappointments. But if you hang in there long enough, you will see the reward. Yeah. Read the next one, baby girl. After Jesus had entered the house, uh -huh. the blind men came to him. And look what, now here's the thing. You got Jesus, he's a healer, he's able, he can fix it. But he says, I still got to ask a question that will make you qualify to receive it. Look at the question. Do you believe? that I am able to do this. I need you to put whatever your thing is yeah. and replace that word this with it. Do you believe that God is able to heal your life? Do you believe God is able to fix your family? Do you believe God is able to take care of your finances? Do you believe that God is able to give you your sanity? Do you believe that God is able to repair your brokenness? Do you believe... That's, that's all God wants. God wants to know, do you believe despite what it looks like? Now, the devil will send witches, demons, internet, atheists, fools. Why do you say fool? Because the qualification of the Bible says the worst thing you could ever call somebody was a fool. You want to know why? Because a fool, the Bible says, there's one qualification to be a fool. It says a fool says there is no God. 
The enemy is trying to rip you in schools to make you not believe in God. He's trying to take you away from God in church. He's trying to, because if he can take you away from your belief system in God, he can remove your ability to receive the benefits of God. That's why, as I go quickly as a church, I need you cats to be in the know and not be fooled. Because listen to me, hear me, everybody, listen to me carefully. One of the prophecies in the end time church before God comes is the Bible says that in the last days many people will walk away from the faith hearing seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I don't want you to be fooled. In the last day people are going to leave church because the devil will convince them to walk out. I'm going to say it again. In the last day, last day, say last day. The Bible says in the last day, Satan is going to convince people to walk out of church. Say, not me. Say it, say it. Say, now leave, keep your hand up. I'm going to talk to you with your hand up. That means you're not going to let people convince you to walk out of church because you got your feelings hurt in church. You're not going to get an attitude with the bishop or pastor and leave church. You're not going to get mad with the other choir member and walk out of church. You're not going to get your upset hips because nobody recognizes your gift and leave church. You're not going to let somebody seduce you and make you walk out of church with a vain philosophy outside of church. Do not be an end time fool. I'm trying to tell y'all because it's coming your way. It's coming your way. In fact, the enemy, I know how he works. He sends things to try to prevent you from coming to church, prevent you from having a real relationship with God. So, so I need to give you an exam and give you the answers so you don't fall prey to stupidity. Number one, hear me carefully because a lot of you, the enemy is trying to rip you away from the body of Christ. Hear me. Number one, just because a person can rap doesn't mean they are a community leader. Put up my number two. Come on. Put up my picture there. Just because just I can rap. Come on. Just because I can put some words together. <laughs> that don't mean I'm a community leader. I can be rapping and still crazy. See, what, what we do is we take someone that has a gift and we don't realize you can be a crazy gifted person. That's why even the Bible says, don't measure a man by his gift, measure him by his fruit. See, what we want, I need a gifted person. Even in the church, I need a person that can prophesy, knock me out. I don't want you to be a prophet in the pulpit and nasty to me outside of the church. See, let me, let me give you a revelation. Gifts, gifts, gifts can be lazy. You can be a lazy Christian with a gift. Because what are gifts? They are given. Gifts can be given. I can prophesy, it's a gift. I can lay you out, it's a gift. I can speak well, it's a gift. Fruit take time to grow. What are the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, patience. Fruit take time to grow. Stop judging people by their gifts. Listen, David, David was an incredibly gifted warrior. David was a battler. David was a fighter. David was a crazy husband. Okay, David had a bunch of wives and cheated on all of them. David even had one woman when he was married to another woman, got pregnant with one woman, had her husband killed so he could keep that woman and never told his first woman. If you're a man of God and you got a side chick, you're not a man of God. And if you are a woman of God and you are a side chick, you're not a woman of God. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. 
but people will start telling you, it's all right, it's all right, you can do it. Listen to me. I am saved by grace, but I see miracles based off of my lifestyle. I am saved by grace, but when I want to see God activate, I got to live a certain way. You cannot be in a place where you are giving your life to the devil and expecting God to work it out on your behalf and giving yourself a pass. Let me go. I got to go. I only got a minute left. I got to go. I got to go. So, so just because I can rap doesn't mean I can lead your community. Listen, just listen. Just, just because a person can dunk a basketball or act on a stage doesn't mean he is an example setter to you and your kids. Folks, you, you got Hollywood up here? Go ahead, go to my, my, my basketball dunk. What number is that? Go to my one. Listen, just because you can dunk a basketball doesn't mean you ought to be teaching my kids how to live their life. You can be a great athlete and still crazy. You can be a great football player and still be carnal. We got to stop promoting people. This culture has to be careful. Because do you know the Bible says in the end time that Satan will raise up the Antichrist so that people will worship him. The devil lifts people up just like God lifts people up. And let me tell you how it works. Whenever the devil lifts a person up, 100% of what they say is not wrong. See, I need you to be a church in the know. The devil won't give them 100% of wrong philosophy, wrong theology. The devil will give them 5% wrong, 95% right. But the 5% will destroy you. And so you'll be looking at this and say, well, they said this and they were right. And they said that and they were, yeah. But what they said, the only reason the devil let them say the right is to poise you in a position where you will pay attention so he can lay the wrong. You got to know the truth and stop following people because they are famous. They put their pants on just like you, one leg at a time. And let me set the precedence. There are no famous preachers. There are no famous pastors. There are no famous bishops. Not in this church and nowhere else. There are no famous. Art. Everybody who you see has to bow down to the name of God. Everybody. Everybody. And, and so I need you to understand, just because they could, man, did you come from that concert? Oh, I was at the concert, and, and all the single ladies, and, and we were boop, 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 and all that. And now, all of a sudden, you want to worship this person. Because you didn't understand that they have a gift, but that's not their character. David was an, you wouldn't, David was an incredible warrior, but a terrible father and a terrible husband. Would you have really sought him for marriage advice? No, really, would you have really sought him? Judas was the keeper of money. But would you have really sought him for financial advice? He ended up killing himself because he betrayed Jesus for money. You got to be careful about people worship. There is only one to be worshipped. In fact, even while Jesus was on earth, Jesus says, don't worship me. He says, worship my Father who is in heaven. Why did he say that? Because I don't want you to get used to worshiping a person. Now that I've ascended on high, Jesus says, you can worship me in spirit and in truth because I'm in my spirit form. But on earth, I don't want you to worship flesh and blood. Let me go. A great talker does not mean they have great character. Some of you single ladies really should understand that. Some people, they got a script, baby. You, you just want, you just a 14,000 person that heard it. You, and, 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 and you're dumb enough to listen to it and think it's original. What? Me? I have pretty eyes? Call them back a day later asking, what color were my eyes? I'm trying to tell you, just because someone talks well does not mean you need to follow them. You follow them because of their fruit, 
Just because someone, someone knows what to say, be careful about listening. To, I, I, I hear these politicians and, and, and the atheists, and they come and they have such great, well, linguistic, linguistically saying that, that, well, you know, because of this and, and my philosophy is this. And, and he's, whoa, that's really good. That sounds so interesting. And they pull people because of vain philosophy. You got to understand. The Bible is tested and tried. Don't you let somebody tell you stupidity and pull you off course because it sounds good. The Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians. They heard the word, then they went back and said, what the man preached, was it actually true? Listen to me, listen. Just because someone says something on the internet, newsflash, newsflash, not everything on the internet is true. Fake news. Stop looking on the internet to see what your cough is. Oh, Lord, I got a pain on my right shoulder, right around my quadricep. What's going on? You look on the internet and say, you got the gout along with triple shippoglephalicus. You be calling, Mama, I got the gout and chicken flipping la -polish. Stop looking at the internet. I remember Johnny teased me really bad, by the way. I was a little boy, and I was, I was I, it was the first time I understood, we, I was washing dishes, and I wasn't supposed to wash dishes. So I was probably about Paris's age, and I, I started messing with Johnny, and Johnny said, come over here and wash the dishes, and there was soap suds in there. And I got soap suds all over my arms. And John looked at oh, you have mockety pox. I ran, Ma, I got mockety pox. I got my love, I got mockety pox. My mom's like, boy, stop it. Soap suds, wash them off and keep going. Newsflash, everything you hear on the internet is not true. Just because it's written in a book, it doesn't mean it's true. Stop being fooled. Just because something sounds good doesn't mean it's correct. So now I got to ask the question. In fact, baby girl, let me prove it to you. Read Proverbs real quickly because I got to move swiftly from here. Read Proverbs. With persuasive words. That's how they did try to persuade you. Keep going. She led him astray. She pulled you out, baby boy. She seduced him. Seduce you. With her smooth Ooh, talk. Smooth operator. Uh oh. Watch out. Coast to coast, LA, LA to, to Chicago, Chicago Western LA. LA. Come on, just. <laughs> you ready to dismiss service? Keep on, come on, come on, come on. Come All on. at once. All at once. He followed her. She followed the smooth talker. Like an ox. I'm, I don't know who needs to stop right there and think about what I'm saying. Because the enemy done sent some smooth talkers into your life. Sent some smooth talkers. Keep going, baby girl. All at once, he followed the smooth talker. Like an ox. Going to slaughter. slaughter. Like a deer. Stepping in a noose. Tail and arrow. Pierced. Pierces his liver. And? Like a bird darting into a snare. Little? Knowing it will cost him his life. All right, my wife always tells me I do too many of these tell, turn to your neighbor things. So I, got a, I, got, I now have a turn to your neighbor quota. I have three per message. So this will be your first one. Turn to your neighbor. And tell your neighbor, stop listening to foolishness. So how do I know the Bible's true? I hear you, Bishop. You keep telling me to trust God. You keep telling me to believe God. You keep telling me the word of God is true. How do I believe this Bible that I have predicated my life on is true? I need you to know this because the internet is going to tell you something different. You're going to go to universities as I did and sit in classrooms as I did and they're going to tell you something different. You're going to go to science classes and you're going to be told things that are not true and you need to know the truth. 
I do not want to serve in an ignorant church that knows how to shout but doesn't know how to utilize the word. I don't. I refuse to be a part of a church that feels good but doesn't know how to activate the word righteously. I need y'all to know the truth because you're going to be challenged in the area of your faith. You're going to be challenged in the area of your belief. And the Bible says signs follow believers. So if the devil can attack your belief, he can prevent you from seeing signs. I need you to believe. So how do I know this Bible is true? You keep telling it to me? You keep saying it? Prove to me this Bible is true. Baby girl, read this for me and I'm going to move swiftly. There are more than 24,000 partial and complete manuscript copies of the New Testament. So now watch this. How many? 24 what? Do you know how many manuscripts archaeologists need to verify that something is true? They need 12, 7 to 12. Who know that? Somebody smart. They need 7, 7 to 12 validations before anything can be stamped with approval as being true. The Bible does not have seven, nor 17, nor 7D, nor 700, nor 7,000. The Bible in your New Testament is the most validated book in human history. There are over 24,000 proofs that the writings were where and came from whom they said they came from. No other book has been looked at, no other book has been transcribed, no other book has been prosecuted and validated as much as your Bible. There are also some 86,000 quotes from the early church that were found in other writings. Can't just make this stuff up. Validating the truth of his historical versions and origins. Let me move on quickly because you got to know this. The Bible has been more validated than any other book. The coming of Christ was prophesied in the Old Testament over 300 times. Let me hear you say it. How many times did the Bible prophesy the coming of Christ? Say it again. Can you be right? Any time in your life, 300 times. Now take 300 different writings from 300 different people at 300 different times. And all of them point to the same thing and it actually happens. There are 300 different things. In fact, in fact go to, a, go to, a, go to a slide number 13. There are 300 prophecies, 332 prophecies of the birthplace of Jesus Christ. Go to slide number 14. There is evidence after evidence after evidence of the coming of Christ throughout the entire Old Testament. And in order for them to have gotten this so right, let me show you the odds. The odds are, get this, 1 in 10 to the 17th power. In other words, for them to have been lucky, there is one out of a quadrillion chances of getting it right. How much is a quadrillion? I don't know. <laughs> a quadrillion is more, if you put it in money terms, than all the money and gold in the entire world. In order for them to have been correct, it would have been a one, and being lucky, 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 it would have been one out of a quadrillion chances for this to have happened the way they said it. So when people tell you the Bible's not true, it's because they don't know the truth themselves. That's good. You couldn't prophesy this and have it all occur exactly as God said it unless God orchestrated himself. 
See, what you have to see is how God, God had to put stuff in position. I need the Romans here. I need the Egyptians here. I need Rome to operate this way. I need Pharaoh over here. And I need to back up. Now, I need Isaac here. I need Abraham here. I need Jacob here. I need to back up. I need Moses here. I need the children of Israel here. I need to back up. I need Saul here. I need to back up. I need David here. I need to back up. I need Adam. I need Eve. I need to back up. I need the earth here. And then all of these things coming together, boom, there is Christ. It was not by happenstance. Ooh, I wish y'all heard this. You couldn't orchestrate all that. Try to put something together. Try, listen, we, we, this church has come. Put a concert together. You'll see, it's hard to orchestrate stuff. How do you orchestrate stuff over 2,000 years and have it come out exactly and get 300 different people to all prophesy different things and manifest all the prophecies to materialize in one 30-year span of life. Show me how to do that. And you doubt God and believe man? Only a fool says there is no God. That's why when God tells you you're going to be healed, you can believe it. In fact, in fact, let me, let me mess you up real good. Let me mess you up real good. Go to, uh, uh, I want to go to something different. Go, 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 okay. Go, go to number, number, number five. Baby, go read this for me. Read this for me. Go to picture number five. I, I just want to take you some places. Go to five. Re read this for me, baby girl. The earth, the earth free floats in space. Affected Job only. Job 26, 7. Before it was ever proven, Job told us in, 20, in, in 26, 7, that the earth was free-floating. Before Job told us that, do you know what the Grecians believed? Do you know what the normal belief was? The normal belief was that, before the Bible said it, the normal belief was that the earth was round and sat on the back of an elephant which sat on the back of a turtle. That's something right there. I can see God having like... <laughs> Just cracking up. There's some, oh my. God had to say in Job, no, the earth is suspended. Before the Hubble telescope went up, God was already telling you in his word. How can you doubt God when God established it before anyone else ever knew it? In fact, read it, baby girl. Read the whole thing. The earth free floats in space, affected only by gravity while other sources declared the earth sat on the back of an elephant or a turtle or was held up by Atlas. In fact, in fact go, to, go to number 10. It wasn't found out that this was proven 100% different till 1942. People thought when Christopher Columbus left that he was going to fall off the side of the earth because the earth was round but was flat. God was trying to tell you 2,000 years ago, hey, y'all, uh, if you ask me, I created this, I can tell you what's up. <laughs> and y'all got some creative things. You thinking the earth is flat on top of an elephant, on top of a, on top of a, on top of a, uh, uh, what is that other thing? On a top turtle, of a turtle. A turtle. Or you can just think, I hung it up there, which is easy to believe. You understand how this is working? Okay, go, go, go to the next. Go, uh, in fact, in fact, no, no. Let me, let me go. Go to, uh, go to, go to, go. Yeah, go, baby girl. Go read, read the next one. Go, go to the next one. Creation is made of particles, indiscernible to the eyes. Hebrews no. said before we ever found out that creation was made of particles. These things we're just finding out. Go ahead, baby girl. Not until the 19th century was it discovered that all visible matter consists of invisible elements. Folks, God told us this before the beginning of time. In fact, in fact, God, God told us, in fact, bless you all up. The Bible even talks about, about dinosaurs. Go to slide number 12. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to tell. See, you, 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 you don't, we, we're, we're fighting a belief system in God that God already proved himself. God, God told us in Job 38 that, that underneath the oceans, do you realize our ocean has been less explored than even our solar system? 
You know less about what's underneath your feet on this planet than That's you do true. about the solar system. God told you in Job, no, in the water there are springs. We didn't find that out till the 1970s when we took big boats and, and uh, submarines. How many people know Job did not have a submarine? Job went down in the middle of the ocean in his flip-flops trying to figure out what was in the water. Somebody had to tell Job. And it had to be the one that created everything. Because up to then, no one ever even knew. And you doubt God can take care of your family? You keep listening to man Jesus. telling, man, it is not the fact that man and science and God are at odds. Science is trying to catch up with God. Yeah, I like that. I got to go. I got to go. We keep fighting. I remember in school, this was one of the big things that, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Folks, read your Bible. God told you what came first. The chicken or the egg. We got scientists doing all of these lab experiments. I wonder what came first, the chicken or the egg. How did it happen, the chicken or the egg? If there was an egg, where did it come from the chicken? And the chicken, where did it come from the egg? How did it happen? What was it come from? See, that's why you can't believe in evolution, because evolution won't even answer that question. What came first, chicken or egg, baby girl? Tell them what came first between the chicken and the egg. <laughs> the chicken or the egg, the question was plagued to philosophers for centuries. The Bible states that God created birds with the ability to reproduce after their kind. Therefore, the chicken Came was created first. I'm so glad I'm in a word church, so I will not let the devil fool me. I will not let the devil fool me anymore. I will not. In fact, in fact, let me let me explain to you. Uh, go to quote number 19. Number 19. Einstein, Einstein, Einstein considered one of the most intelligent men in the history of this world. Einstein started out as a supreme atheist. Einstein didn't believe in God. Einstein didn't trust God. Einstein said throughout the first part of his life, there is no God. Einstein ran into a problem. Einstein started doing the math of the universe. He took years math trying to figure out the universe and this combustion at the beginning and this Big Bang Theory. And Einstein stepped back and said, I've got a problem. I can't figure this out. He says, every time I have tried to do this, I still keep going back that there must be a God somewhere. Einstein said, started out as an atheist, died as an agnostic. What is the difference? An atheist believed there is no God. An agnostic said, you know what? I, there's got to be a God. I just ain't going to pick which one. He had to change his mindset because his mathematical equation would not let him walk off without seeing God. And Einstein left this earth saying, the more I study science, the more I believe in God. So you struggling in your finances? Trust God. You worried about your family? Trust God. You're concerned about how things are going to work out for you? Trust God. Things are going bad in your life? Trust God. I want to let you know the science and history point there must be a I got so much to tell you, and I can't tell you. I got so much to tell you, I can't, I can't. It's, it's too much, I can't, I can't. I, I got all this and then all that, and, and, and I, I just, I, I don't even know how to, it's, I, I could go 15 more hours, and I know y'all waiting to go ahead to the all buffet, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave you there at this. I, I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm, I'm gonna leave you with this. This world, is trying to pull you away from God because they don't want you to get the benefits of trusting God. When you trust God, you get stuff like this happening. Isaiah, baby girl, read 41. See, see now, now you can never go back and say, and, I, and, I, and here's what your bishop does. This is what your church does. This is what your church does. 
Your church doesn't just tell you a message and expect you to just take notes. Every human, every person on this planet can go on our website right now. And all of you, if you're a part of this church, you got a text message of this message. You want to know why? Because I want you to take this word freely. You didn't tithe for it. You didn't pay for it. Right now, that's about $1,000 worth of information on your phone at your disposal. Freely given. I could put in a book and make a whole lot of money, but I don't want anyone to be excluded from what God wants them to learn. I want you to download this and study it for yourself because when you believe God, everything you're trusting God for all of a sudden opens up for you in your life. Look, look at what happens. Read Isaiah 41, beautiful. We're getting out of here. For a child is born. No, no, Isaiah 41 and 10. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. So, do not fear. So, hold up. For all of my, all of my stressors, all of my worriers, all of my overthinkers, all of my waker uppers, all of my can't get it togetherers. You got the God of the universe who's created all things, who says, I love you. He says, you got to believe me because I got your back. I know how many hairs are on your head. I even know if you don't have any hair, and I even know if you borrowed some hair. That God is saying, don't be fearful. Keep going, beautiful. For I am with you. I have not left you. I am with you. Go ahead, beautiful. Do not be dismayed. Don't be upset. Go on, beautiful. But you say, well, but Bishop, I got this to be upset about, and I got that to be upset about. And listen, you don't know who's on your side. Yeah. All right, let's take 10 seconds and do the math. If dude was able to call step out of nothing, because remember Einstein said he got a problem. He says he knows the Bible talks about there are four realms. Einstein said, I found out there's a fourth dimension. I know the dimension of earth. I know the dimension of space. I know the dimension of sky. But he says, I found a fourth dimension. And he says, that dimension is untimed. Why is that dimension untimed? Because God is not timed. If you take your watch and you walk up to heaven, your watch will stop because there is no time in heaven. That's why he says, I'm from everlasting to everlasting. That's why Ecclesiastes 3 says to every purpose, there's a time for it under heaven. Time is only under heaven. There is no time in heaven because there are no limits on God. God steps in time, works in time, then comes out of time. That's why God says, I am. Watch the word. Sit. Watch the word. Watch the word. He didn't say I was. He says, I am Alpha and I am Omega. Both of those are present tense. How can you presently be Alpha and presently be Omega? It is because Time means nothing to me. I am both because I have access to each. Einstein said, there is a fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is untimed. Well, we live on the first. The birds live on the second. The sun lives on the third. Who do you think lives on the fourth? That's why Proverbs says, the earth has he given to the son of man, but the heavens belong to the Lord. God says, this my crib up here. Even, even, and look, God don't want you to have his crib. Even if you go to the Revelation class, at the end of time, God says, I'm going to give you a new heaven and a new earth, and you're going to live on earth. I'm still going to be in heaven. So, so you got to understand, Einstein said there's a fourth dimension where God abodes and God steps in time and out of time and in time so God can be in your 30s, your 20s, your 5s, your 2s, then birth you and has already visited all the other times in your life. Puts things in motion, puts provision, puts health, puts blessings, puts benefits, then steps out, births you, and doesn't worry because he knows what he did.
Here's my second turn to your neighbor. And ask your neighbor, so why are you worried? And wait for an answer. God done already been there. God is at your job right now, tomorrow. God is at your house right now, next week. God is at your 70s, your 90s, and your life right now, waiting for you. But at the same time, he's still with you. Good work. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. So sexy to see you teaching like this, my God. Okay. I'm only laughing because that really felt good. I, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I'm just so. Let me show them. Let me show. All you. the husband gonna go home and say, and Jesus said. That's right. They going. Oh yeah, we preaching tonight, baby girl. And I'm expecting all five fold ministries to be a present. Beautiful, finish it. <laughs> but I, uh -huh. God, will restore you. I'm in restoration mode right now. Some of y'all don't know. We are in restoration mode right now. And you don't know it because you don't believe it. But if you can pick on it, pick up, pick up on it in the spiritual realm, in this room right now, there's a spirit of restoration that's hovering upon this church right now. There's a spirit of God restoring all the things in your life that have been ripped away from you and your parents and your grandparents and your children. God says at this very moment, it's moving in this spiritual realm. You gotta believe it to pick up on it. You gotta believe it to pick up on it. You gotta believe it to pick up on it. Pick up on it. I'm seeing your faith. I'm seeing your faith raise. I'm seeing your faith raise. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing your faith rave right now. That's it, right? That's what God has been waiting for. He has been waiting for your faith to raise. He says, if you can believe it, all things are possible to them that believe. He's been waiting for you to trust. He's been waiting for you to believe. I don't know right now, but I believe you ought to make a demand on heaven right now. In the name, Lord Jesus, I thank the God that created the universe, that gave me life, that healed my children, that restored certain things in my life. That same God, I am trusting. I am trusting God to take care of our family and to heal and to fix and to restore and to deliver. At this very moment, I am trusting God to deliver and heal and fix. Y'all stay right here, look at me. Don't you miss this moment. Don't you miss this moment. God says, I'm calling an end. I'm calling an end to all of that worrying you've been doing. I'm calling an end to it. God says, I'm calling an end. I'm calling an end. You've been so hurt and so worried and so concerned. I'm calling. He says, don't you know who I am? He says, remember, you're not a worrier. You're a reminder. Remind the devil who your father is. Tell, tell the enemy who your daddy is and what your daddy has done and what your daddy is planning. He says, I made a promise and a declaration in your life that at the end of the day, I'm going to perform a good work in your life. Don't you miss out on what God is doing. He says, I know at the end of the day, you've been struggling, you've been going through, but God says, I made a promise to you. The God of the universe who one day stepped out of nowhere into where created his atmosphere then created the universe then created a planet then created a man and created a woman and brought us forth he ain't forgotten you he has not forgotten you I know some of you thought you were forgotten you are not forgotten 
You say, well, how can God remember me and all these other people? Most of the people in this room got cable. What channel you turn to doesn't influence my channel. I got a remote control, which means I have a direct connection to the cable source. Which means if cable has enough brain power to be able to work for me and work differently for you and work differently for you and work differently for you. Why do you think the God that created the cable station, who created the cable maker, who created the ways for the cable to come forth, how do you think that God can't go to your, hook up to your life and communicate to you? I need you to know this without a shadow of a doubt. God hears your prayers. I speak restoration over your life right now. And I will restore to you your health. Whatever part of your body has been going through, I want you to touch it right now. And speak to your body and say, in the name, Lord Jesus, I prophesy over my body. Father, you said healing is the children's bread. Now, dear Lord, the fight against my healing are my past pains. But I trust you more today. And I have ever trusted you before. The difference is not your power. And the difference is not my experience. The difference is my new belief. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you can defy what man said. And I can believe you defy what my body's trying to tell me. I thank you, Father. I am in restoration mode. Restore my body. Spirit of the living God, I tap into you. I trust you. You are able to do exceeding and above all I ask or think because of the power, my belief system that operates in me. So this is the last thing I'm going to have you say. I want you to hear this because it's important. You know death and life is in the power of your tongue. So I need you to say this with me. I will never again doubt you, Lord. That's all I want you to say. Open your mouth and give God worship. Our time is up. Open your mouth and give God worship. Open your mouth and give God worship. Open your mouth and give God worship. Open your mouth and, God Open your mouth and, God Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth. If you're young, start using your mouth for the Lord. Open your mouth for Christ. Begin to speak. Begin to say, God, I love you. I trust you. If you're older, be going again to give God glory. Begin to use your words to thank God. Every head bow, every eye closed. I feel the spirit of restoration in this camp, y'all. Y'all, a lot of folks in this room have lost a lot of things. Some of you, you lost some material things. I ain't talking about the material stuff. I'm talking about the emotional time. I'm talking about you done lost some peace and, and some joy and some solitude. You, 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 you've, lost, you've lost some mental health. You, you, you've lost so many things. That, that, that blicky has been tough on you. Folks, you're in this room and you done lost a whole lot. You lost so many things, it hurts. I need you to join us in your restoration. How do you become restored? You become restored by restoring your relationship. How do you become restored? You become restored by regaining your relationship. I had a person in the church, and they said, Bishop, uh, their license had, inspired, had expired, and they, they had some penalties and stuff like that. I said, what you do? They said, what, what? I said, what would you do? They said, well, I went and I paid my license, and I went ahead and got my information together, and they took me back, and I restored my license, and my license is good. I said, oh, that means you just restored your relationship with Department of Motor Vehicles. He said, basically, yeah. And now you have all the rights and privileges that you deserve. Yeah. God wants to restore a relationship with you. He wants so you can have all the rights and privileges you deserve. But it starts off, it starts off with a relationship. Every head bow, every eye closed. You're in this church and you say, God, I need a better relationship with you. I need a better relationship with you. I need a better relationship with you. You're in this room and you need a better relationship with Christ. Maybe you're saved. Maybe you're not. 
Maybe you're saved, but you know you haven't given God your all. Be real, folks. There's a lot of fraudulent folks out here. A real person admits, my wife and I, we've been married almost 26 now, and one of the things we realize is what makes our marriage great is the fact that we can admit when we got to do something better or different. Instead of waiting for the other person, we do it. We, we initiate the change. You need a better relationship with God because God has more he wants to give to you. If I'm speaking directly to your heart, when I count to three with boldness, put your hand up. One, two, and three. Lift your hand up. I need a better, put it up with boldness. If your hand is lifted, would you please join me here? Please. Please don't be too shy. Don't be too shy and miss out on your purpose. Don't be shy and miss out on grace. Don't be shy and miss out on what God has for you. Don't be shy. Hi, pumpkin. God love you, precious. God love you. God bless you. Hey, daughter, how you doing? God love you, dear. Hey, son. God love you, boy. Hey, dear. God love you. Hey, my friend. Hey, that's my baby. Can y'all give our family members some love? Hi, Pumpkin. I saw this brother in the hospital about two weeks ago. And man, I'm so glad to see you back healthy. May God give you your health back and restore your strength and give you your life back and make you better than you've ever been before in the name Lord Jesus, so be it. Amen. I saw my brother a couple of weeks ago in the hospital. Hey. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap. Uh, you're in this church, and you say, I got this peace, Bishop. But, man, I'm tired. I'm worn out. And sometimes I just feel like giving up. Um, Elder Rob, I, I'm, I'm learning now. That's probably something we need to start asking for. Some people get tired. And you feel like, I'm tired, and I almost want to want to stop moving on this journey or I don't know how to continue to move on this journey because I'm so tired you're in this room and you say I need prayer because I'm tired and I'm worn out and I need God to help me if I'm speaking to you I need you to run up here right now don't think about it don't negotiate yourself out of it run up here hey my brother I love you so much run up here run up here run up here run up here run don't miss it I'm, I'm waiting I love you I love you so much. I love you guys so much. Hey, handsome. How you doing? Hey, pumpkin. God love you. Everyone, look at me. You are brilliant people. Hi, pumpkin. I didn't get a chance to hug you. God bless you, precious. God love you. Hey, daughter. How you doing? I know this little girl. I'm, I'm
I want you to give the smartest people in the room a hand clap. These are brilliant people. They're not brilliant because of mistakes. They're not brilliant because of anything wrong. They're brilliant because they were right enough to know, God, you got something for me, and I'm not going to miss out on it. Can you give the most incredibly brilliant people on the planet a big old hand clap? So let's do this together, family. Words are powerful. Words get us blessings, and words get us in trouble. I can take my words and go order a pizza, which I would like to do, praise the Lord, or I can be with my wife and order arugula. That's another thing. It's all about the words. So let's use our words. Everybody say, Father God, I confess Jesus is my Lord. He died for me. He rose again. I forgive everybody that tried to break me. I release them. I hold them harmless. Baptize with fire. Give me new tongues. In the name, Lord Jesus. Father, give me the strength to make the journey and to win. So be it. Amen. Clap your hands and give God glory. Oh, bless you all. God bless you. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus, put your hedge of protection around our family. Keep them. Let them know they are loved. They are not alone. Let them know, dear Lord, we got their back. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.